Hello students, today we are going to discuss the chapter Principle of Inheritance and Variations under which we are going to discuss two topics Introduction to Genetics and Mental Experiment and First Law. Now if I ask you a question, do you resemble your parent? Obviously you say yes. So or like a horse resemble other horses and a rose plant look like other rose plants. Now how is it possible? Let us answer that questions. Now it is a very important fact that similarities and differences among the members are not coincidental. The answer came from the father of genetics none other than Grigon Johann Mandel. Now let us study the brief sketch the life history of Mandel before we go into the details of Mandel experiment. He was an Austrian monk born in 1882 in a peasant family of Moravia. In 1847, he became the head of Augustinian monastery Brun, Austria, now Bruno in Czech Republic. From 1856 to 1865, he conducted breeding experiments in the garden pea in the monastery. His findings were published in 1866 and he died in 1884. Unfortunately, he was not appreciated by his contemporary biologist. Let us see what were the reasons. Work were ahead of time. The journal were limited at that time for the circulation. He was not sure of his own findings. And then a very important thing that the mathematical approach was not acceptable by then biologist. The Darwin's theory of evolution was on prominence. So the rediscovery of Mendelism. The Mendelism was rediscovered by three biologists, namely Hugo de Rice of Netherlands, Karl Korens of Germany, and Ivan Chermark of Austria. Before we go into the details of Mendel experiment, Let's have an insight into some important terms which are used in genetics. The first important term is the heredity. What is heredity? So, this is the transmission of character, similarities and differences, generation to generation. It's a very common proverb like begets like. That is, the similar organisms give rise to similar type. What is genetics? It is the mechanism of inheritance and the causes of hereditary variations. So when we study genetics in terms of hereditary variations and the term was coined by William Betson in 1906. Now we often talk about traits. What are these traits? These are specific characters vary from one individual to another. For example, let us take an example of a plant. A tall plant and a short plant or flower colors maybe is the red color or is the white color so different characters that we study in the genetics are called traits now what are genes the genes are the portion of DNA that determines characters and the term was coined by Johansson he was a Danish botanist in 1909 Another very important term we often use in the genetics is hybrid. Now as you see in the diagram that there is a cross between one and the other plant, a yellow crossed with a red and the hybrid is produced. In one of the plant the yellow with a long character and the red with a small character and the hybrid that you can see is somewhat in between the two parents. So that is called a hybrid. Another very important term is the pure breed, which gave Mendel all the success. What are these pure breeds? These are the plants that produce same trait for many generations. For example, when we study the Mendel's experiment, we will see a pure tall plant and a pure dwarf plant, as you can see in the figure. Now you must have heard about the two terms, the genotype and the phenotype. The phenotype is external features of an organism. That means 
if an organism is there, whether it is a tall, whether it is a dwarf, that you can see, that is called the phenotype. And the genotype is a genetic constitution of an organism. Now, this genotype can be homozygous, that means both the alleles of the genes are of the same type. As you can see in the diagram, the purple color flower can be denoted by capital P and capital P or a white color flower can be denoted by small p and small p. On the other hand, in the heterozygous condition, the alleles are of two different types. It is denoted by the capital P and small p. Now, let us study the Mendel experiment. Now, the very first question that arises in our mind, that why Mendel succeeded? Now, let us see what are the some reasons behind that. The first very important reason is he chose garden peas, which has seven pairs of contrasting characters. Second point, which is very important, and that it has a short life cycle that results obtained within a year, and he worked on the pure breeding traits. Third important point is easy to perform crosses in the garden peas. Why? Can you guess? Yes, it is self-pollinated plant. And very important thing is the many seeds are produced in one generation. Now you can see in the figure that the pea flower is a self-pollinated flower as the male part and the female part, the stamen and the carpel are enclosed within the flower. So there is no chance of cross-pollination. Now let us see what were the seven contrasting characters which were studied by Mantel. The first was flower position. That includes whether the flower is terminal or the flower is axillary. The second was the stem length. The plant was tall or short. Another important character was the seed shape. Whether the seed shape was round or wrinkled. The seed color, whether it is a green or yellow. And then he also studied the seed coat color, whether it is a colored or white. And then the pot shape, the pot shape, whether it is puffed or pinched. And the pot color, whether it is a green or yellow. So these were the seven contrasting characters which were studied by Mendel. Now, let us see what were the experimental techniques. So, Basically, he performed breeding experiments in three steps. The first step was the selection of pure pairing plants, that is pure breeding, whether they were pure for the tall plant or whether they were pure for the dwarf plants. After that, the production of first generation by the process of hybridization, that is the two parents were hybridized, they were cross-pollinated to produce the F1 generation. The third step was raising the second generation, which is called F2 generations, and that is by self-pollination. Now, as you can see in the picture, the process is called emasculation. In this particular technique, the anthers are removed from one plant, and the pollen grains from another plant, they are dusted on the stigma of female plant. And that is how the cross-pollination is done. So this was the technique which was used by Mandel. Now, let us come to which type of cross is used. The first cross is the monohybrid cross. Now, the Mandel, he was wondered that why some plants were tall and why were some short. So, he crossed a tall plant with a dwarf plant. Let us see what was the result. When he made the crosses, as you can see in the picture, the parent crosses, the capital T, capital T, the stems for the tall plant, small t and the small t stems for the short plant. And the two alleles from the tall plant, that was capital T, and another allele from the short plant was small t. In the first generation, he obtained all tall plants with the genotype capital T and small t. So phenotypically all the plants were tall. Now let us see what happened when he raised F2 generation. 
in F2 generation, he obtained tall and dwarf plant in the ratio 3 is to 1. But here, the genotype, you get two types for the tall plant. One, capital T, capital T, and another, capital T, small t. Now, can you identify which is homozygous or which is heterozygous? Yes. Capital T, capital T is the homozygous condition. Capital T and the small t is heterozygous condition. So, what is the genotype of the short plant? Obviously, it is small t and small t. So, the ratio he obtained after F2 generation by self pollination that is 3 is to 1. 3 is tall and 1 is dwarf. This ratio is called monohybrid ratio. Now, you must have a question in your mind that what is after all a monohybrid? Why it is called a monohybrid cross? Mono means one, that means the cross between two plants which are differing in one character. So, here the one character is the stem height, that is tall and short. Now, let us conclude what we have studied today. So, gametes bring something from the parents which Mendel called factor. Now, here I say about the factor because at that time when Mendel worked, the term gene was not coined. The second important point, the factors make a character appear in the next generation. So, it is a factor which is responsible for appearance of the character. A pair of unique factors for each character one he inherited from each parent and both contrasting traits they appear in F2 plants. Now, we are in a position to define two very important terms that is dominant and recessive. So, one character which did not appear in F1 generation called recessive and the character which appeared in F1 and F2 is the dominant. So, in the previous experiment that Mangle studied, can you tell which one is dominant and which one is recessive? Yes, it is the tall which appeared in the F1 generation. So, it is the dominant character and short it appears only in the F2 generation. So, it is the recessive character. So, now we are in a position to state the first law of dominance that is that one factor in a pair may express itself and prevent expression of the other. Now, let us have a look into the summary. Characters are transmitted from parent to offspring. Second, the Mendel worked on garden peas and considered gene as factors. He performed hybridization experiments. He established law of dominance. Now, a session for you. Check your understanding. Mandel worked on the Mandels were rediscovered by Corinth, Chermark, D. Bryce, or all of these. You have the four options. Choose one. What are alleles? Genotype is you have two options whether it is genetic constitution or outer appearance. Mandel studies pairs of contrasting characters in garden peas. Homozygous condition is capital T, capital T or capital T, small t. And the next, the monohybrid differs in characters, either it is one or two. Mm -hmm.